What's going on everyone? Welcome back to T3G. My name is Dalibor and today we are talking about how to adapt older camera lenses to your current camera and kind of what the benefits are. Now the first thing I want to talk about is where do you get lenses, right? Now of course you can go eBay and find camera stores and buy a lens, but I'm gonna bet that you've got an old film camera sitting around. But watching the Chris Howes and Peter McKinnons of the world, uh, they had talked recently in the last year or so about using old lenses. What we're gonna be using is our SL1 as an example camera. And obviously it comes with the kit lens, the, uh, what is it, the 18 to 18 to 55. So we're gonna, we're gonna mark it roughly to about 50. I mean, whatever, we'll just push to 55. And what I wanna really compare is, is it worth the effort, right? Now to convert, you're gonna need one of these. Now this is a adapter. And this particular one for the, for the EFS system has a lens element inside. It has a glass element inside, so that's why it's got covers on it. Other ones, like the one for the M10, does not have a lens element because it already, I guess, maybe provides the distance. I'm actually not sure what that's about. So if you know, you know, drop that down below. I was concerned that the adapter would not have the piece necessary to allow for the aperture change because this, the way it's set up, is there's actually a physical piece on the inside, I'm gonna turn on the autofocus here, let's see, there we go. So yeah, it's, it's the piece in here. Uh, it actually hooked, or actually, I lied, it's up here. It's this piece in here, it's kind of hard to see. But anyway, it's, uh, bring it back, bring it back. It actually attaches to a, a, a latch on the lens. And I was concerned that I wouldn't get aperture control because that's gonna be important, especially in a wedding type situation but I was able to get aperture control because the adapter, someone considered these things before making it, uh, does have the necessary little trigger. That's actually even harder to see. It's, it's a black piece inside. So basically then I was all set, but I wanna kind of show here, I took this earlier today, and kind of the difference in focus pulls, right? The old lens has a fixed focus ring, so it only goes so far. You know, here's the end. And that helps because you can adjust and when you're done, you're done. You know there's no more adjusting to be done. Whereas the kit lens has an infinite focus ring and that does make things more difficult because finding that perfect point of focus is hard. You'll see here in the shots from today, I couldn't do it. <laughs> I was trying to stop kind of the same spot the, uh, the old lens stopped and I couldn't. I, you know, I, I think I got close, but couldn't really get the exact same hit. So I'm here today to actually finish the video that I was gonna do last week, but it is nighttime, it is evening time rather. We still got a little bit of skylight, but primarily it's evening and we've got some great lights down here in downtown Elmhurst. And uh, we're just gonna take a few shots and show off the difference between the kit lens at 55 mil, granted, kind of see the difference in shots. I'll try to replicate the same shots, here we go. So this is the kit lens, full auto, autofocus, right? And if I wanna change zones, I gotta go into settings. I have to go and change actual menu settings. And I wanna change kind of what kind of autofocus I'm looking at right now. This is just a, this is the flexi zone focus and kind of everything is meant to be in focus. But here's the thing, if I try to refocus, right? This is the kind of situation you run into. If you wanna, you know, you have to change focus modes in order to get a different kind of look. So here we are with the old manual Canon 50 mil. And obviously like this is all the way out focused. I don't even know how, how to phrase it. I don't know the right terminology. You know, I'm not that guy. Obviously you don't have the stabilization, but if you see, if I move the camera around a little bit, you see there is this really beautiful artifacting. And you're gonna get some really interesting photos and videos by using this older lens. Like regardless of what you do, this is just the, the lens as is, and you're getting some really interesting highlights and reflections and things like that that you just won't get in your normal lens. You know? So here we are, we'll focus on, I actually really like that house over there. I don't know what it is, the building but then we just switch it up here. All right, this is the thumbnail I used before, but it's it's nice, it's super controllable. Like it's fine grain controllable to the point that if I wanna move in closer, I can change it up. 
and I don't have to wait for the autofocus. I don't have to worry if the autofocus is, you know, catching on something else. I can just say, all right, boom, there's my shot. I really like that building. I think it's an apartment building. Although we said, we said it looks like, uh, it looks like a person. See, that's a really nice transition. Now, the other benefit here is going to be being able to use longer lenses. With this uh, old camera, I ended up getting into my possession this, uh, I think it's 200, I don't even know, 250. It's got a little bit of, a little bit of range. So I think it's a 80 to 160 or 80 to 200. Yeah, it's 80 to 200, maybe 75 to 200. Maybe that's the same one as the current one. As you see, I'm way closer. I'm still getting that really interesting artifacting and effects. You can have nice focus pulls. This, this focus ring is gigantic. So like, you can't mess it up. That's so, like, so far, but it is heavy. Whew. I mean, like, look, look at this thing, gigantic. It's like a pistol. It's like a gigantic weapon, because it is, it's enormous. And it's kind of the flip side, right? Hey, if you're gonna be handheld, do you wanna hold that? Do you really wanna hold that? Because the difference in weight is astronomical because we're looking at something that is uh, metal versus something that's plastic, like pretty straightforward. The difference is like shocking. I don't even know how else to describe it. It's, it's a shockingly lighter lens, a shockingly lighter rig without the, the lens, the heavier lens. Now granted, this is a big 200 or whatever, but the point remains. So you've got a couple flaws, right? The weight, you gotta buy the extra piece, but man, I'll tell you, shots just look way, way nicer. It's a nicer 50 mil shot when you have that little bit of artifacting, the bokeh is more interesting, just a more interesting shot. And I think, I think you really, really get the benefit out of it in photo because obviously you don't have to worry about movement. But I think if you try a little bit, work a little bit with it, maybe, maybe with a focus puller on a gimbal, although that's, I feel like that could get difficult, complicated. I really think this is a handheld solution. I think you're gonna get the best performance out of it handheld. But I just really think that you can go exploring. Maybe mom and dad have a kit lens somewhere from an old film camera. Just buy the right adapter. Both of mine were both under $50 a piece. I love the fact that I bought them. They, like I said, I used them a couple times during the wedding just because it was more of a run and gun kind of situation and I didn't have time to really bother with the focus. I used it with the bridal party getting ready primarily. I feel like they know I'm here. They dimmed the lights on me. <laughs> but still, even that little bit of use helped and I think got some interesting, pretty shots. I'll drop a few more shots just around the house with the M10 and the 50 mil just to kind of wrap it up. This isn't really a product review or anything. I mean, I've got the links down below if you want to use them, that's much appreciated, but this is really kind of just talking about the benefits of using some of these old lenses and kind of my experience with them. But yeah, enjoy this and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.